So welcome, Rowan. Uh, you are studying in Berlin, as I understand. Yes, I am. Thank you for having me. Rowan, um, I have read uh, with interest this uh, very uh, extensive research project that you and Cheryl Nestle carried out, documenting the uh, extensive efforts being made by uh, Zionist forces in Canada to suppress um, uh, Palestinian voices. So congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Yeah. What's been the reaction so far um, to it? Um, I mean, it depends on what kind of reaction you're looking for, of course. I, I think um, within the Palestine Solidarity Movement, there's been a lot of almost relief that someone has just done the kind of documentation to prove what I think most people already know. I, I think there's a lot in that report that people who are involved in Palestine Solidarity don't necessarily find surprising, even if they find it hard to read or or perhaps at times uh, depressing. Um, on the other side, and other side, so to speak, uh, in terms of the groups that we're actually documenting who are carrying out said repression, uh, it's been so far silence, which isn't particularly surprising. Uh, I think if they found holes in our, our research methodologies or something, they would have brought them up, but that hasn't happened. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if that continued to be the case for the future. Uh, obviously, I can't predict that perfectly. But I think on the two sides, that's kind of what we've seen so far. Okay. I, I would guess that on the um, pro-Israel, pro-Zionist side, they, they don't really have much of a interest in promoting the debate on this. I would think that they probably would rather um, it remain within academic circles and not really go very far. That's just a surmise, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, I think when we're talking about the kind of accusations of rampant anti-Semitism and things, once you start to factor in anti-Palestinian racism to those discussions, it becomes much more difficult to portray this very um, extreme vision of what's actually happening on Canadian campuses. And so the best option is to ignore anti-Palestinian right. racism or right. pretend it doesn't exist. Rowan, um, uh, do you think that the this kind of um, uh, suppression, which I've uh, referred to in my uh, post, is growing on Canadian? No one was talking about this five years. Well, few people were talking about this five years ago. Do you think that the phenomenon is increasing? I think it's expanding, yes. I, you know, we, we documented in this report, and people have also documented in places like the US and, and the UK, older instances that go back as, as far as you want. Um, but the, the scale on which it's happening is definitely expanding, especially within the last several years, um, but even within the last five, 10 years. Um, and I think that that's, that's, uh, that's a, it's, it's because it's now necessary. I, I mean, recently Jewish Currents published a letter by Edward Said where he kind of is arguing for the kind of Jewish intellectuals in the United States to start taking Palestinians seriously. I'm obviously simplifying the, the letter a lot and not doing it justice, but, um, and you know, if you think of Edward Said's position as this kind of one of few Palestinians in academia in his time, we now see a, a totally reverse situation, or maybe not totally reverse, but certainly very different, um, where there are quite a few Palestinians in on university campuses. There's a new Palestinian studies department here in in Canada, and so on and so forth, and increasingly Palestinian students as well. And so I think that the necessity for this the the increase in backlash and repression uh, is really key to understanding it as well. Yes, we certainly see uh, some. I I remember um, not too long ago, an Israeli author uh, was doing a book promotion uh, deal. Er Eri Shavit, I think his name is, and um, after visiting a dozen American campuses, he wrote an open letter back to Israel saying, "We have to up our game here because we're losing the campuses." So. Um, I think there's some of that going on in Canada as well. What are your Certainly. plans to now? Uh, you're you're in Berlin, so you're not so active in Canadian campuses. But what are your plans going forward to use this document? So I think there's several several ways that we're hoping it's used. Uh, I mean, I focus primarily 
on the student section of the report. That was what I was primarily responsible right. for. And so in that sense, what I'm hoping is that students are able to use this report to uh, back up their claims when they're up against uh, unfriendly university administrations or various things like that, uh, diversity boards, etc. And essentially, when these things happen to students in the future, which we know they're going to happen, they're going to continue to happen to students on Canadian campuses, they have this report that they can draw on to say this is part of a system of harassment, this is part of a pattern of anti-Palestinian racism or Islamophobia, depending on the context, and they can use this report as a kind of tool in making their arguments and making their claims and legitimizing their claims about what they're facing. Um, more broadly, you know, this report, like I said, is kind of reflecting a lot of what people already knew. And so we're hoping that it kind of serves as a authoritative tool that people can cite in defending their claims, not just for students, but for other people. I think it's also useful in understanding how these forms of repressions take place. And so in that sense, I, I think we're hoping to, to see further discussion um, on what different forms of repression look like in different circumstances. One of the things we saw with the report, which is largely focused on the university context, is that this isn't the only place where such forms of harassment are taking place. We also got some testimonies from lawyers, from journalists, etc. And so we know there's more happening out there. This report doesn't capture everything, um, and I don't think any one report could. Um, and so in that sense, we're hoping that it kind of furthers a discussion, but leads to further research as well, um, both in Canada and abroad, that looks at how deep this, this repression goes. Right. I can't help but observing that faculty members and PhD students always look for further research, so research opportunities. So but certainly it will be a, a great contribution. Thank you very much for documenting this. Thank you for spending your time with us today, and uh, good luck with your studies in uh, in Germany. Thank you so much.